Today, we geek out about space pirate Amazon ninja cat girls, or in other words, Spank. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Lee with Geek City USA here, and today we're going to talk about a game from Steve Jackson Games called Spank. Now, Spank is short for Space Pirate Amazon Ninja Cat Girls because what else would Spank be short for, right? That's exactly what it is. Anyway, this is a game for two to four players, ages 14 and up, and I would definitely also say for this review, definitely more of a PG-13 review because some of the imagery in Spank is a little more suggestive in nature. But what Spank is, is each player is going to control a team of these uh, cat girls, these cat women, and you are going to fight to complete these capers. And the first person to collect 10 loot will end up winning the game. I'll take you over here, I'll give you a real brief overview on how the game is played, and then we'll come back and I'll give you our thoughts on the game. All right guys, so this is Spank, Space Pirate Amazon Ninja Cat Girls. Now the goal of the game is to be the first to collect 10 or more of these loot, cake, uh, loot tokens. And you're gonna start out the game, you're gonna deal each player four of these crew cards. And these are going to be the cat girls that they have working for them. So each side, we'll, I'll take four here as well. Once you do that, you'll also deal each player one toy card. Now toys are special strengths that they can give to their cat girls. And we'll look at these and you'll see each cat girl is going to have a section of statistics. So in this case, you have Space, Amazon, Ninja, Cat Girls. Or actually, this is Space Pirate, nin Amazon, Ninja, Cat Girls. And in this case, if we gave Tanya bow and ribbons, she would lose one in her Amazon, so she would be worth five, and, but her Cat Girl stat would go up to two. And you can hold on to these. You can have two in your hand at a time, and you can hold on to them and give them to your Cat Girls later on. Now some of these are also um, pool boys. Now pool boys are not only, let's see if I can find one in here, here's one. Pool boys are not only very powerful as they give you plus one to all of your statistics, uh, they also count as one loot token. So those are pretty sought after as the game goes on. Now each player will also start the game with two loot tokens. And we're gonna deal out these capers or these challenges here. And you'll put four across, so one, two, three, move some loot tokens, and four. So you'll start by picking your player color. We'll make this player the red player. I'll be the green player. And then what you do is you put one of your tokens on whichever cat girl you want to be your captain. Now there are a few benefits that your captain gets. Your captain starts, they can always have two toys assigned to them. So typically uh, a cat girl can only have one toy assigned. A uh, captain can have two. A captain can also only be attacked by another captain in a cat fight. And a cat fight I'll cover later on, that happens uh, more when there's a tie towards the end of the game. And then also, uh, once per caper, a captain can also re-roll once for free. So that's definitely a benefit, but there is a disadvantage if you ever lose your captain, your other characters will get minus one to their dice roll. So that's just something to keep in mind as the game goes on. So in this case, I'll just pick one randomly and we'll say uh, Carrie's Deadly Yarn will be the captain of this team. And the captain of this team will make Daphne the Daring. So you'll start by seeing who goes first. And let's say that I'm gonna go first and I'm gonna go to this challenge here and I'm gonna set Dread Pirate Roberta. So we will flip this challenge and we will see that it says Garden Maze and I'll show that to you. And there's this toy icon here. That means as you defeat this, you will get to draw a toy from the toy deck. And this says Amazon, that means you're being tested on your Amazon skill, which unfortunately at this point, Dread Pirate Roberta has a terrible Amazon skill. So what you need to do, do I have a to the toy that would help out? Because I could equip her with this if it would help out, but it's not going to here in this case. Now to defeat this caper, this challenge, I need to roll lower than my, equal to or lower than my skill that's being challenged. So in this case, Amazon, Dread Pirate Roberta here with her four Amazon skills, I would have to roll four or less on this roll. And I will roll here, and I actually did it. So I just rolled a four with Roberta. Now I can choose to have Roberta keep going, or I can stop there. Now in this case, I'm gonna take my toy for passing that challenge, 
which, which gets me a, a fuzzy alien pet, which is a plus one cat girl skill. I'll add that to my toys. And these are actually left face up. Everybody could see. You're able to trade with your opponents if you want to. Um, but then you would go ahead and flip this next one here. And this is a pool boy convention. And this is a, a cat girl plus two. So what that plus two means is I get plus two to my dice roll. So in this case, uh, Dread Pirate Roberta's cat girl skills are worth seven. So I'll roll here, and I rolled a 10. So I failed that, I did not pass. So we'll look here, and Dread Pirate Roberta is tapped out or cashed out. I usually turn them sideways just to indicate that they're injured or out for the round. And then we would go over to our opponent. Now, the opponent has a bit of a benefit going second. Even though they could lose a lot of these, they can see what's you know upcoming here. So they know Amazon and Catgirl are the first few skills. So you're not going to want to send Carrie's Deadly Yarn because her Amazon skills are rather lousy. So you can send, uh, we'll send Tanya because Tanya's pretty well versed. And then we'll go ahead and roll Amazon. We need a six or less. And we rolled a six, so she passes that. This player would get a toy, which we can hold on to there. And now she is here, and we have Cat Girl at plus two. So we need an eight or less. And we rolled an 11, so now she would be knocked out. And would come back to this player. And you're gonna go through here as you play through and defeat all the challenges. Now next time this player is going to attempt this challenge in particular because they were knocked out, they'll get a plus two to their dice roll for each time they fail. So that helps you not get stuck and helps you keep moving on. Now let's say in this case the red player made it all the way through, beat that caper. They would get two loot tokens and one toy for being the first to complete it. And then we would continue on and go to the next set of capers. Now you can use your loot tokens to buy toys in between rounds. Um, or you can save them and hope that you will actually go ahead and beat the game quicker than everybody else. But you'll discard these challenges. Everybody is righted back up. You have an option to get rid of characters, have them walk the plank. Um, you can trade loots with your opponent or toys with your opponents and so on. And then you'll just go ahead, you'll deal out, not cruise, but four more challenges and you'll continue and do the same thing. Now some of these challenges are going to have uh, different things on them. Let's see, like in this one here, you can't use a toy on it. There's some that will actually give you loot tokens for defeating it. Yeah, like Battle Fleet here. If you're able to defeat this guy, you get a toy and a loot token. So you'll go back and forth and back and forth until one player gets 10 loot and that player would be the winner. Now one other item to note, if one player finishes all the challenges in a caper, the other player still gets their turn to try to defeat them as well. If they do, um, both cat girls here, they could have a cat fight if you choose to use those rules. And in that case, you'll pit your cat girls against your opponents and the winner is able to steal loot tokens from the other player. But I'll let you go ahead and, and discover that on your own. It does has, add a little bit of duration to the game, um, so it's up to you as to whether you want to use it or not. But that's a real high level overview on how to play Space Pirate Amazon Ninja Cat Girls. I'll take you back up top and I'll give you our thoughts on the game. All right guys, so that was Spank. So let me start by talking about the components and the art of the game. So first of all, this is predominantly a card game. There's not a whole lot of components. Uh, there are the, the uh, cardboard chits for the loot tokens, and those are fine. They were not double-sided, but they were thick enough and hardy enough to uh, definitely make it through a lot of play. Uh, the cards themselves, I definitely like the fact that they are bigger in nature. These aren't like your typical poker size or mini size. They're a larger card, and I think that definitely helps to present the game well. It definitely makes the visuals easier to see. You can see across the table at a glance what your opponents have in front of them. So you can definitely plan a little better as you're playing from turn to turn. Now the art itself, I think a lot of it was really clever. Uh, there's a lot of jokes in the art. Some of it is a little more bold than others, but I, I think you could definitely get a laugh or get entertained by the art. Um, I will say again, some of it is suggestive. So if you have younger kids around, you're definitely not gonna wanna play this with them. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. And again, a lot of the jokes are tongue in cheek, but there are some that are a little more in your face, so just be aware of that when you're checking out the game. Now the gameplay itself is really easy to pick up and teach. It's a game that if you pull out in front of a bunch of new players, it'll probably take you about five minutes to explain the overall rules to the game and get you playing right away. Now there is a high level of randomness to the game because when you start out, your capers are flipped over, so you don't know what cats you're sending at what capers, so you don't know if it's a good selection or not. And then once the capers are exposed, or once you see what they are, 
uh, you still have to contend with the dice roll. So if the caper requires, say, a ninja skill, and you send a cat girl who has a high ninja skill at that caper, you may still roll poorly and then lose the caper, even though you statistically really shouldn't have. So that's something to keep in mind if you aren't a big fan of randomness in your game. Now, there isn't a ton of player interaction in this game, so it's really you against the capers and you against your luck and your dice rolls. You can trade some toys with your opponents, and also, if multiple players uh, finish all of the capers, then you can have a cat fight, it's an optional rule, but outside of that, it's really you against the, the cards itself. So uh, while you're all playing together, you're kind of playing almost your own game. As far as replayability of the game goes, there's a lot of options with the game. There's a lot of capers, there's a lot of different cat girls, um, there's tons of toys, so there's a lot of different options for how you set up and what your individual team may look like. So I think there's definitely a replayability factor here if you're a fan of the style of game. Now all in all, we had a good time with this game. It's a good light little filler game that you can play in between other games. It's a beer and peanuts kind of game. Um, Again, it's not going to be for everybody. A lot of the art is a little risque, as well as there's a lot of randomness to this game. So if, if that's something that you're kind of questionable on, definitely check out some gameplay of this game to see if it's something that will click for you. If you're looking for something light that you can pull out on a whim that you could just kind of laugh at and, and eh, maybe trash talk your opponents a little bit, this would probably be a game that you want to take a look at. All right, guys, that's it. I'm Lee with Geek City USA. Thanks for hanging out with us. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Please subscribe if you don't already. Uh, check us out on our other social medias. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. And uh, definitely interact with us. Drop us a line, shoot us an email, whatever. Let us know what you're playing and what we should check out next. Again, thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time. Cheers.